Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to describe how energy flows from the sun along feeding pathways. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? We have to understand that all energy comes from the sun and that this energy is passed along the feeding pathways or food chains from one organism to the next. Let's battle on. We're going to approach the learning of our ecology definitions or ecology terms like you would approach the learning of a new language. When you learn a new language you have to learn your vocabulary. When you know your vocabulary you can put it together and speak the language. The same thing here. When you learn your ecology definitions, you can put them together and then you can speak the language of ecology. It is vital to learn your definitions, therefore, and make sure you understand what they mean. All of the energy in an ecosystem comes from the sun. Every ecosystem on the planet depends on the sun and needs this constant supply of energy in order to function properly. The sun is the primary source of energy for our planet. The light energy is changed into chemical energy in food when plants make food in photosynthesis. For those who are able for a bit more, this is an energy conversion where the solar energy is converted to chemical energy. This chemical energy is passed along the food chain when organisms consume or eat each other. The chemical energy present in plants is then passed on when other organisms like herbivores feed on the plants. So when our furry friend here eats the barley grains, the chemical energy is passed from the plant and is now in his body. The chemicals are passed from the plants to the herbivores. So in this way, feeding forms the pathway upon which energy flows. Other organisms eat the herbivores. For example, our friend Mr. Fox here. These are coniferous organisms or carnivores. So energy in the form of chemicals then gets passed on to the carnivores. This sequence of organisms, beginning with the plant and ending with the carnivore, is called a grazing food chain. Energy is passed along the food chain from one organism to the next. When an organism dies, like Mr. Fox here, it is decayed by detritus feeders. These are organisms that feed on dead organic matter, such as earthworms and wood lice, and others such as bacteria and the fungi of decay. This then will return the nutrients to the soil. Plants then can recycle the nutrients, they're actually fertilizers, turning them into chemical energy once again. Food chains are short, as much of the energy is lost as the food chain gets longer. In fact, 90% of the energy is lost at each step. The energy is used, or lost, in movement, in heat, because we're hot stuff, and in waste. Only about 10% of the energy is passed on to the next member in the food chain. After about three steps, very little energy is available for use. This is why food chains are generally limited to a maximum of five organisms. What is a producer? A producer is a plant that makes its own food and photosynthesis. P for producer. If you are a producer, you are producing or making something. P for plant. 
P for photosynthesis. Therefore, a producer is a plant that makes its own food in photosynthesis. Producers are autotrophic. You make your own autograph. So, producers make their own food. They are autotrophic organisms. So, our Christmas tree here is an autotroph. So too is the cactus, because both of these organisms are green and they can carry out photosynthesis. However, the mushrooms are not autotrophs. They have no chlorophyll, they have no green colour, they cannot do photosynthesis, they cannot make their own food. What is a consumer? A consumer is an organism that takes in food from another organism. To consume means to eat. It has an entirely different meaning from a consumer in business class. All animals are consumers. All animals are eaters because they eat or consume other plants or other animals. For example, herbivores are animals that consume or eat plants only. You see the word herb for plants. Carnivores are animals that eat meat only. They only eat other animals. Your dog at home is actually a carnivore. You might have him trained to eat bread and nuts and even carrots. But by nature, your dog is a carnivore and will eat meat only. Omnivores are organisms that eat both meat and plant material. That would be ourselves. Some of us might have made the decision to give up meat. We are vegetarians. But biology has designed us to eat meat and strictly speaking from a biology point of view we are omnivores. So in a nutshell a herbivore is an animal that feeds on plants only, a carnivore is an animal that feeds on animals only and an omnivore is an animal that feeds on both plants and animals. A primary consumer feeds on a producer or feeds on a plant. P for primary, P for producer, P for plant. Your primary school is the first school you go to. A primary consumer is the first eater. Primary consumers include herbivores which eat plants. Primary consumers are also detritus feeders which are feeders that feed on dead organic matter Things like dung beetles and wood lice would be detritus feeders. And decomposers, which are the bacteria and fungi of decay. The earthworm is a detritus feeder. The rabbit would be a herbivore. And the toadstools are fungi and would be decomposers. What is a secondary consumer? A secondary consumer feeds on a primary consumer. You go to secondary school after primary school. I tend to look on secondary consumer as savages. S for savage, S for secondary, because the secondary consumer is eating another animal, which is rather savage-like. Secondary consumers include carnivores, which are the meat eaters, and eat meat only and eat other animals and the scavengers. Scavengers feed on animals that are killed by others. So our friend the hyena here is a scavenger because it feeds on animals that might be killed by the carnivore, the lion. Don't forget S for scavenger and S for secondary consumer. The tertiary consumer feeds on a secondary consumer. The way I remember this is that you go to third level or tertiary level education after being in secondary school. Another way to remember that is T for top and T for tertiary. Tertiary consumers are top consumers, meaning nothing else eats them. So tertiary consumers are obviously carnivores because they eat other animals and they are top carnivores, as we've just said, because nothing else eats them. 
So our friend the line is a top consumer or a tertiary consumer, top of the food chain. The wise owl is a tertiary consumer, top of the food chain. Nobody else will eat an owl. The human being is a tertiary consumer because hopefully nobody else will eat us. Reach the end of our lesson. Have we achieved our objectives? Can you describe how energy flows from the sun along feeding pathways or along food chains?